A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hello everybody, and uh, welcome for the one millionth time back to Newbra Beach here in Wales. Uh, the forecast is meh for the next two weeks, and uh, I wanted to come out and take some photos, so don't think they're going to be good photos today, but uh, we'll certainly have a go. And obviously as I say that, the sun comes out. Pretty standard for this channel, isn't it? Never mind. I honestly can't believe this. The, um, the forecast, look at this. I don't even see that. It's just grey cloud all day, every day. That is not grey. Anyway, let's pause thinking about the weather for a minute. Uh, I have been asked countless times since having uh, my Ricoh GRX3, I always forget if it's the 3 or the X first, uh, and my Fuji X-Pro3, I've been asked so many times what I make of the JPEGs from each camera. And uh, my answer to that has always been completely non-existent because I don't know, I, I shoot raw 100% uh, of the time. So I've not really been able to give an answer on what I think of the JPEGs of these two cameras. Uh, and today, I'm going to try and find out if I, if I can give a bit of an answer on what these cameras are like if you like to shoot JPEG. Now, the reason that I have always shot RAW is because I love editing photos. I absolutely love the process of sitting down with photos and just trying to work out where exactly I want to take them. And uh, it's for that reason, pretty much entirely, that I've never really shot JPEG. The thing is about JPEGs though, often we consider them as files that we don't need to edit. But the reality is that we are editing them, we're just choosing to edit them before we take the photo rather than after. Yeah, particularly with cameras like this, because, uh, well, they're famous for their film simulations. I don't know if Ricoh calls them film simulations, but basically there are a load of JPEG settings put together to try and emulate what old film stocks used to look like. I say old film stocks, they're probably still being produced because uh, film's making a comeback. Which again, I think is another reason that people like these cameras, because it's shooting film in a way without the hassle of shooting film. I think, I'm not part of this world, so if you're looking for an expert opinion on this stuff, this is not the video. So both these cameras give you basically unlimited flexibility when it comes to what you want your JPEGs to look like, the editing that you do before you take the photo. So there's all these film simulations on both cameras, but then you can tweak them to your heart's content. You can play around with color, you can play around with tone, clarity, sharpness, loads of different stuff. And it basically means you can make your photos look exactly how you want them to look ahead of time and then in theory, you never have to think about your settings ever again. And that is definitely appealing. I have to say one thing I'm finding uh, a little bit challenging shooting JPEGs on the Ricoh is that obviously when you shoot JPEGs, you need to make sure that your exposure is absolutely dialed in because you don't have the latitude to bring back detail in the highlights and that from the shadows that you do when you're shooting RAW. And trying to work out the exact right exposure when you don't have a viewfinder and you're relying on a screen in bright conditions, well, I don't know if I've mentioned they weren't forecast, it's tricky. But uh, yeah, that's the first, first challenge I'm finding with the Ricoh particularly. Not so much a problem on the X-Pro3 because there is a viewfinder. But it's also about double the size, so that's, that's worthy of consideration if you're comparing these two cameras. Entirely different cameras, really, when you think about what they're for. This is weather sealed, this is not. This is more like a rangefinder style camera. I mean, it's not a rangefinder, as many of you pointed out in my video on the X-Pro3, but uh, it has an OVF. And this just has a, a screen. But they are both APS-C 20-odd uh, megapixel files, so uh, they should look fairly similar in their, um, in their output, image quality wise. The more experienced I become as a photographer, the less I know what image quality actually is, but uh, it's a topic for another video, I think.
I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the screen philosophy on the X-Pro3, hiding it, basically. But it's a bit of a pain when you're constantly trying to change film simulations, which arguably you wouldn't be on a normal day. But uh, today, when I'm trying to test all different ones, a bit of a pain in the neck. I must admit that at the minute, the only film simulations that I really like on either camera are the standard ones. Now admittedly, I'm only looking at the files on the back of the screens of each camera. Maybe my opinion will change when I look at them in more detail on a computer. But for the moment, I really don't like any of the film simulations. They all look a bit muddy to me. As I say, maybe that'll change. It doesn't smell great in here. I don't know if you can see me. Hello, I'm here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't smell great in this boathouse. I assume it's a boathouse. Uh, despite the smell though, and the echo, I think this is probably quite a good place to test my assumption that I made before, which is you need to critically nail exposure when you're shooting JPEG. Uh, and my assumption was that you can't recover that much shadow detail uh, or highlight detail, certainly to the extent that you can shooting raw. The reality is that I don't know that to be the case, because like I said, I hardly ever shoot JPEG, slash never shoot JPEG. So uh, I should probably test it. And this is a decent place to test, I think, because obviously there's lots of dark stuff around the corner of the frame, otherwise known as bricks, and then a really bright middle of the frame. So uh, I'll shoot both RAW and JPEG on both cameras, and then when I get home, I can take a look at how much detail is in each of the files. I'm gonna go now, though, because my eyes are starting to water with the, the smell. Right. I, uh, I'll tell you what I am quite enjoying about shooting JPEGs is that the photos look pretty nice when you review them in camera, which I've never found to be the case with uh, RAW files. They just look flat and, meh and lifeless, which is exactly what you want from RAW files. But uh, it's nice to look at the back of the camera and see a photo you've just taken and see it look a bit more sort of vibrant and like it's got a bit of life. Yeah. Does anyone else seem to spend their entire life waiting for people to get into their shop? If I was rich, I'd just hire a couple of people with a dog to follow me around everywhere I went to take photos and I'd just get them to populate my scene. But I'm not, so I can't. Anyway, in those conditions, I found to basically no one's surprise that the files I don't think looked any good. It's not massively shocking that film simulations of any kind make murky conditions look murkier. Now luckily, as I mentioned, uh, you can tweak these JPEG settings to your heart's content. You can play around with saturation, sharpness, contrast, all the standard stuff. But the thing is, even if I managed to make the JPEGs look exactly how I wanted them to, before I took the photos, I'd have some real big reservations about shooting JPEG versus shooting RAW. And namely, they are, number one, dynamic range. So it'll surprise none of you to learn that uh, the JPEGs didn't hold up very well in that little smelly boathouse. And if you push the exposure, the noise is just horrific in the shadows. It's really, really nasty. If we compare this to the RAW file, then straight away you see the benefit of shooting RAW uh, on a fairly big sensor, APS-C, and uh, yeah, it just makes so much more sense in this situation to be shooting RAW. And the second reason I'd be very cautious about shooting JPEG is that shooting RAW and getting a very similar but better result is literally one or two clicks. So here is a JPEG that I shot on the Ricoh, uh, and as you can see, I think it was the, uh, what's it called? Monotone hard setting. And true to form, as you can see, there is literally no detail here in the blown out highlights. I can try and pull down the highlights, but to no avail. There's no detail there. Now here is the RAW file that I captured at exactly the same time. I shot RAW plus JPEG, and so the camera spat out the JPEG, but also the RAW file. And all I need to do in Lightroom is go to Profiles, Browse, and I'll be showing the profiles that match the camera. And lo and behold, we have Monotone Hard here. And there is so much more detail than in the JPEG. And that was two clicks. Now, some people might dislike editing so much 
that they don't want to even go through that process of two clicks, which is fair enough. And if you're willing to spend the time ahead of time, ahead of taking photos, to really dial in your settings to get the exact JPEGs that you want, then go for it. But you do need to take real care over your exposure every time you're pressing the shutter. And you also need to make sure that your expectations aren't too high when it comes to being able to recover shadow detail and highlight detail. But if you're the sort of person that just wants to use JPEGs, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you shoot JPEG plus RAW. And yes, it'll cost you lots of space on your memory card, but it will also mean that when you're shooting your JPEGs and loving them most of the time, if something amazing happens right in front of your camera and for some reason you don't quite get the exposure right, for instance, all is not lost. Because while the JPEG might be completely unusable, if you've got the RAW, you might be able to recover enough detail to make sure that that file looks amazing, exactly the same as the JPEG with two clicks of editing. And if that's the difference between having the photo and not having the photo, and it's only cost you two clicks uh, of editing and a bit of room on your SD card, I think it's well worth it. So yes, basically, in summary, these two cameras are completely fine for shooting JPEGs, and if you dial them in, you'll probably love them, but like all photography, it's best in good light, or dramatic light, or if you're just a better photographer than I am. There will hopefully be some good photography coming up on this channel again soon. Uh, feels like it's been a while. Anyway, for what it's worth, I prefer using the Fuji X-Pro3 over the Ricoh, but I prefer the files from the Ricoh. There's not much in it either way, but uh, yeah, that's some sort of conclusion, hopefully. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching and to everybody who subscribed after me asking you to do so last week, very kind. And thank you also to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. So if you head over to my website, you will find many JPEGs uh, in my portfolio. They did all start out life as raw files, but uh, they're JPEGs now, all the same. And I would really recommend anyone who's interested in photography check out Squarespace with a free trial. There is nothing like collating all of your favorite work into one place, somewhere that you can see them in real high resolution, and that of course other people can see them too. And I think creating a website can sound quite daunting. Squarespace makes it super simple. It's all drag and drop, they do all the resizing for you, it's impossible to get wrong. And honestly, I say that as someone who has no technical proficiency when it comes to IT, at all. So if you're interested in checking Squarespace out, then you can get a free trial by going to squarespace.com. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So yes, big thank you to them for their continued support and uh, thank you to you for watching. As I say, hopefully soon, some good photography. Now I've made those promises before though, so we'll see. See you then.